What's going on guys, Zach Evanish here. I got three exercises on tap today. You can see I am working, taking a quick break to teach you guys something. So I've done four rounds of sleds. I've done kettlebell farmer walks, but my turf is about uh, 60 feet each way, about. So I'm doing a double trip. So I'm going a little bit lighter. So you can see the kettlebell farmer walks are set here with the 80s. And then I'm doing kettlebell snatches. Lighter weights are done for 10 reps. Moderate weights are done for five to prolong the shoulder health. But I wanna go over a common mistake people make when doing a kettlebell snatch. And uh, this can damage the shoulders. You might be able to get away from it or get, get away with it in the beginning because you haven't accumulated the volume of doing things incorrectly. But just because you can do it doesn't mean you should do it. The common mistake is people swing the arm out and then the arm and shoulder gets jammed back. What we want to do is utilize primarily the lower body and the back, do a pull, and when it gets over the head, I ever so slightly loosen the grip and punch my hand through. You can't really see it uh, when you're looking at it as far as the eye, uh, the hands and the grip, but here's when you know it's wrong. You'll see the kettlebell kind of freeze in the person's grip and then it flips over and smashes their forearm. And so what's interesting is, of course, uh, I always say technique is the greatest sign of strength, but technique takes practice. And most people are gonna struggle with this in the beginning. So I don't like to do too much volume of overhead work in general, unless you have great mobility. And that being said, women tend to have much greater overhead mobility than men, which is why we see men predominantly with shoulder surgeries as opposed to women they could do it. So everybody's treated differently. So let's do a set right here, prop up the camera, and I'll make sure I'm in good view and try to give you a couple of angles, okay? All right, right here, stretch through the legs. I'm gonna pull it and then I punch. Boom, okay? Good stretch, pull, punch. All right, I'm gonna move back, give you guys a little more of a view. This is always the problem with being a one-man army. I'll get you another view from higher up so you can see the upper body rather than full body. The key is that kettlebell should stretch deep through the legs. You want the hamstrings, the hips, the posterior to get the stretch. When they get stretched, it allows for an easy pull. The other mistake is doing opposite of that. If you don't stretch it far enough, deep enough, it becomes an upper body dominant movement. And most people, they don't know how to do a kettlebell muscle snatch, you know? So full stretch through, I get another angle to see more of the upper body and the wrist. One more set of five. A little bit of a different angle. You'll catch the upper body. You'll see also, I don't have the best lat shoulder mobility and so I don't go crazy on my overhead work I still get it done but I don't go crazy with it you know lifting for 33 years the body accumulates mileage and so you have to adjust so if I do the snatch with athletes I tend to utilize it with a dumbbell lower repetitions anywhere from two to five repetitions the kettlebell snatch is gonna be for my more experienced athletes who have been around, so to speak. I could teach it to them. So there is a, I guess, a progression and regression to this. I used to do a lot more kettlebell work, uh, especially overhead. I'm a lot more conservative with it. And then it also goes on who am I training? What time of the year is it? I wouldn't be doing this with a baseball player. Maybe I would do it with volleyball players in the deep off season. Um, Maybe not. As always, it depends. So here we go. Prop up this camera a little bit better. And five reps. We're on the 53 pound kettlebell. Okay, a little different angle. Pull, punch. Come in, stretch, 
pull punch. Come in. I like to lower it like a reverse shoulder press. Pull. Ta. Stable at the top. Don't let it swing back. Boom. Lock it. Ha. One more. Hey. All right. Check it out, guys. A lot of kettlebells here. Up top, 18s to 35s. 44s and 53s down there. 70s, 62s, 70s. 106s. <laughs> Believe it or not, I remember I started using kettlebells about 20 years ago. So my late 20s, I remember taking the beast kettlebell outside, the 106, and doing five by five, one arm, clean and press. Now, I don't do that anymore. I can't do it anymore. And I always say this to when we train adults, don't worry about what the younger guys are doing. You're 45, 55, you will get hurt when the 16 year old in your brain starts telling you what you should and shouldn't do. And so there's a time and place for training. And the answer is, it depends on who, what, when, and where. A lot of factors come into place. If you're on YouTube, subscribe, like, drop me a question or comment below. Go to zackstrength.com, get your free training courses that actually work. They're not these bullshit training courses that do nothing and give you stupid tips that you could get anywhere. These are training courses that you can utilize for free and derive results from. You'll also see other training resources, opportunities, resources for strength coaches in the business realm. And uh, my online training program is called Gladiator Strong. It's with Train Heroic. It's a seven day free intro. Cancel anytime. I'm out.